three, two, one. Oh my God, that's cold. Wow. Welcome back to You Betcha Radio Podcast, the coldest podcast in all the Midwest. I am Miles, the You Betcha guy, here with Ryan, the t shirt guy. We got a great episode. We talked the s'mores video, the the Midwest chef that we did with Charlie Barron's. Talked about all the ridiculous things that went on with that. We also talked about different beer drinking gadgets. Uh, we're talking the Shakuli. We're talking the Shahelmet. We're talking the <laughs> Declaration of Independence sleeve. The whole shebang. You got to find out what we're talking about in the middle segment. And we finished it up with a fantasy football recap. Tyler may or may not be the worst or best, depending on who is... Who's <laughs> Tyler saying it? Probably best. If I'm saying it, worst commissioner of all time in fantasy. But before we do that, we got to talk to you guys about fairwaymeatmarket.com. It's all about the meat. Ryan, it's all about the meat. It's all about the meat. It's tailgating season, and I know that we're not able to go to the stadiums, but you're watching football somewhere. So you're going to need some meat. For your football watching experience and fairwaymeatmarket.com is a way to go. All you got to do is log on to fairwaymeatmarket.com, pick out your any meat that you want. They have packages, um, all sorts of good stuff for you. You order it, arrives at your dorm, your dorm, <laughs> your door, or your dorm. Maybe your dorm. Mm-hmm. Maybe your dorm. George Foreman grill. George Foreman grill, maybe in the dorm. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe slap a nice ribeye on the George Foreman and oh. uh, uh, get get all the your your dorm mates You'll packed into one tons of friends one dorm room. Yeah, you're the you're the hit on the <laughs> hit on the floor. Yep. Um, <laughs> huge flex. <laughs> huge flex. If you got a if you if you're in the dorms and you got a fairwaymeatmarket.com package showing up, this big box full of meat. You're the, that's instantly get your the friends chairs with out. everyone. Yep. Um, <laughs> I know that I wish I would have had fairwaymeatmarket.com back in college. I would have been the hit on the floor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, you, you got to check it out. We Guys, we got a You Bet Your Package on there. You have your so, own package. So I got my own meat package, um, and uh, which we'll get into in a sec. But I mean, this is a, this is a Midwest company. Midwest Company. We got this new sign behind us. Crispy. Wow. Just look at that sign. Beautiful. This podcast is presented by fairwaymeatmarket.com. Midwest Company through and through. You, uh, it, it, it makes me feel great that we got partners that are all about our brand and about living in the Midwest. All of the meat is hand cut by someone who lives in Iowa, I believe, or... I believe so the heart of the Midwest somewhere in the heartland. And uh, yeah, I think it's Iowa, but hand cut specifically picked out for your savory steak, burgers, bacon, mouth watering desires. Mm. Oh God. The you bet you package, as we were saying, is a great deal. It's valued at over $265, but you can get it. From the podcast at $170 with free shipping. You don't even got to pay for shipping. If you use code Y-O-U-B-E-T-C-H-A, you betcha. Again, that's code you betcha, Y-O-U-B-E-T-C-H-A, with no space in there. You can get uh, some four ribeye steaks. You can get some flaming yawns, some pork chops, steak burgers, uh, bacon. You guys know I love the bacon. Oh, <laughs> you're in the dorm room and you got some bacon sizzling on that George Foreman. You're going to wake up the rest of the neighbors. They're going to be knocking at your door. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, the mouth watering side dish. So if you guys want to get some meat delivered directly to your door, you got to go to fairwaymeatmarket.com. Again, use code you betcha for almost for like $100 off. Basically, with this code, you're going to buy the meat anyways at some point. Mm-hmm. With this code, we just saved you 100 bucks. Bada boom, bada bang. No questions asked. Head to fairwaymeatmarket.com. Let's just get into the show. 
I would venture to say it's almost the nectar of the gods. Back, baby, back. I want my. Oh my god, that's cold. Oh, you betcha, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Hello, and welcome back to episode 84 of the You Betcha Radio podcast. I am Ryan, the t shirt guy. And guys, we've said it before. We're going to say it again. The merch is heavily open right now. Before we get into the show, we just got to make sure that you know it's crew next season. It's hoodie season. Go check it out at Oh You Betcha. We have all of our merchandise open um, with a lot of other cool stuff too. We're going to be getting some new hats in here soon. Uh, just a little subtle plug that no one else knows about. So go check out the merchandise, guys. At the same time, Tyler, you've still been going hard in the paint. I love it too. With the You Bet Your Radio episode, starting from episode one on YouTube, uh, on Facebook. You Bet Your Radio is starting from episode one, going on about three episodes a week. Yep. Starting with episode one. 11 dropped today. Okay. So if you want to go back and listen from the beginning, it's kind of cool to look back and see what episode one looked like. You, yeah. can, also see, you can also see how much skinnier I was when we started this. <laughs> the evolution <laughs> and, of the podcast and, what and the miles. And yeah. what the internet has done to me. Yep. Yes. Um, so guys, make sure you also check out You Bet Your Radio. Tyler's doing a lot of cool stuff on there. Um, you can find that on all social media platforms. At the same time, Miles, Twitch streaming tonight. I'm not sure what we're playing with. It might be another new game on a Wednesday for me. But uh, we'll be streaming tonight at uh, 6 p.m. Twitch.tv slash oh Yeah, betcha. we might have to play the new uh, the new old Tony Hawk. I yeah. don't know. We haven't mm. done that yet. Yeah, we'll maybe break something new out. Um, so, guys. And before we get in that light, I got to say, last night, <laughs> I was absolutely dialed on the Twitch stream. There wasn't a single... There wasn't a single thing that was going to knock me off my game. We won three tournaments in a row. When traditionally on the skill level that we were playing at, I was not that great. I was dialed in, carried it the whole stream, three straight wins. We even had a bunch of trolls in the chat that were coming at me and really? coming at our business. And I just handled it no problem. Talking to them in the chat, just casually getting birdies, birdies, birdies. <laughs> It didn't matter last night. And Miles so, is doing the, the no look off the tee yeah, box. Oh, what did you say there? Boom. Uh, so if you want to see me dialed in, you got to check out the Twitch stream. So do we maybe Every have- once in a while, an athlete like myself has a Jordan flu game-esque performance, and that was me last night. That was last night. Do you think we maybe need to continue that momentum tonight, or is that still up in the air? I don't know. We'll have to see how we're feeling later today. It's a, a game time decision, I think, is what we're going to call that. All right. We'll go with it. Well, speaking of dialed in, Miles, let's talk about the s'mores video. Okay. Bit. Yeah, that one is we that actually dialed were in? the were we... opposite of dialed in when we got <laughs> that, baby. Um, yeah, that's a great uh, segue, Tyler. This this was the fourth video that we've posted with him in probably the last month. Yeah, with Charlie. Yep. Yep. So this was the first video that we shot together, if you can believe it or not. <laughs> that was the very first one? No. Yep. Like this when we got together this time. Gotcha. Okay. Um weird <laughs> It turned out good. I did like the way it turned out. I think it was our humor. I think that it aligned with what I think is funny. Um but in, in terms of your traditional video, it was definitely a willy nilly at best. It was uh, it was a whirlwind. It was a trip for uh, sure. And we've talked about this before, but Charlie's um, camera guy, Max, he likes a little more structure in his life. Uh-huh. And there's nothing wrong with that. But myself and Charlie like to not have as much structure. Yep. And uh, Tyler's now, at least you've, from what I know, is you've learned to just roll with the punches a little bit. Yeah. I mean, if I, I, I would like a little more structure, but I am more relaxed on it now. Yeah. At first it was struggle. It's like, I need to know every shot going ahead, going into the shoot. I don't need to know that anymore. Yeah, It's kind well, of, a, it's a 2v2 battle. And, it's the and can- what was funny when I was, I'll finish up the point is that Max was, uh, I felt like he was a little bit like wide eyed, like, yeah, <laughs> this is what, again. Cause we had one like that last time we met mm-hmm. up and I, he was hoping that that wouldn't happen again. And it did. It absolutely did. The first shoot we did. Well, lucky for Max, I bit the bullet and edited, bo- edited both of those. So I think that helps Max with those for sure. Oh, yeah. He was probably like, 
Thank God. Wash my hands of this. One thing too, which okay, so this is actually funny. So I I I uh I have notebooks that I write down my thoughts and my to do lists and stuff. You guys have seen Multiple. my my, mm-hmm. my notebooks. And once they fill up, then I just get a new one and I put the years that it was the year or whatever, the yep. time stamp that it was. And if you actually go back, I believe we'll have to check on it with a double check. But at least I know mentally I've thought about it this long. From when we first started the page, I had the idea for a s'more video that would be a not it wouldn't be like exactly what we did, mm-hmm. but it was like a gourmet s'more video from the the inception of the page. Yep. And uh kind of funny to like two years later to see it come out into the real world. Well, I also feel like any video that ends with someone asking, are we going to post this? <laughs> is a uh, little willy nilly, little unstructured. But I, I, I think to me, it was it was great humor. Um, you know, you, you guys threw a huge curveball in there with the with the wasabi ranch s'more, which, by the way, you tasted it. It was it was it was pretty fucking bad, dude. <laughs> How long did that aftertaste stay in your mouth? Uh, I don't know. We chugged some beers after that. So I think that helped wash it down. Wash it down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was bad. It was a tough thing to put down. Um, what Charlie's the, face at the end of the video was pure. That was, was actually, real. That was a real, yeah. I think that was real. Um, how were the wasabi peas? Cause I saw you snacking on them in the background. Were they fine by themselves? I, I mean, I'm sure if you're a wasabi pea guy, they were good, but I'm not a wasabi pea guy. I found out. <laughs> I just don't like them really in general. So not, not your typical, uh, uh, like, like bar snack. I'm gonna, or, I'm gonna much rather take cashews, maybe some yep. dots, pretzels, um, maybe something like that over wasabi peas. Yeah. Uh, Where did you guys decide to come up with the ingredients? Because you guys went to the C store. And that was a bit, but I cut that out. Yeah, we went to the C store. That it was it. Just randomly pick stuff. The wasabi peas actually were not in the plan, and then we were standing in line to check out, and Charlie did one of these. Look to his right. Look down. They're sitting by the register, grab, throw in the bag. <laughs> and, that Video. Was, and that was about as much uh, planning as the wasabi peas. And I don't think that surprises anyone. I don't know. No. I don't think that the wasabi peas um, bit. I don't think anyone thought that was a real thought out segment. So, yeah, I was I was waiting for uh, when the when the ranch came out, I was waiting for a runny ranch bit. I was waiting for some kind of bit to come out. Uh, with that, just the, the video was already getting long enough. I think it was yeah. probably we, uh, we were legitimately losing daylight. We were legitimately losing daylight, and at this point, we had been filming for like a half hour, and the camera pretty much had been rolling the entire time, mm-hmm. and that's a lot of footage. How many bits do you think you cut out of that video? If it was just off um, the cuff, bat you and Charlie back and forth. <laughs> How many? Um, so what I do when I edit is I throw every single bit down in the timeline, and then I trim from there. The first edition of that video was 17 minutes long. <laughs> Holy smokes. Was there a bit that I didn't even see that you were like, I like this bit, but it's just not right for the video? Um, yes and no. There was a lot of bits that were just funny by themselves, but just didn't make sense. Like what? Give me an example. So like you guys had the whole C-Store conversation. Like it makes sense a little bit, but it doesn't matter that you guys went to the C store. Right. You got ingredients. Yeah. yeah. But you had a funny little back and forth about it. And it's like the C store and Charlie's like, I'd rather gone to the farmer's market. These wasabi peas say farmer's market on it. We can't lie to the people. And it's like that just didn't fit. But it was a good banter between the two of you. I mean, I'm sure our delivery was infinitely better than that, but yeah, <laughs> I think you guys get I would hope so. Yeah, I would hope yeah, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, well, if it wasn't, then I get why it was cut from the video, but because, uh, oof, Tyler. <laughs> I would say that in that video, that was probably one of the more artsy, good-looking backgrounds that you guys had. Golden it, hour? Golden hour. Um, uh, just an orange glow from the from the mm-hmm. sunset, as well as the orange glow from the fire. It was kind of hit all hit all aspects. Yeah, and I feel like my my favorite bit in the video was when you did the Mar- the Malo volcano hibachi. <laughs> that was hibachi style. that got out of hand quick. There was a, that was another bit I cut out that you guys said the rocks the the paper blocks around the fire were a hot plate to keep the s'mores warm. <laughs> That's a, that's true. That's actually not it, bad. The the the, the, pay, the stone pavers were. 
I mean, those things were hot. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's the, the volcano thing. I mean, it was just one of those things where like, oh, wasabi makes me think of hibachi. What do the, what's the traditional joke at the wasabi thing is that they do the stupid onion volcano. Right. Oh, these are white. We can make a marshmallow volcano and light it on fire. And that was about it. <laughs> yeah. Miles Tyler won't get that though, because he's never had a hibachi. Yeah. I have. Hibachi. Okay. I just never seen the volcano he never before. Seen the volcano. Oh yeah. You went to a bocce. They didn't do the volcano. Yeah. They did the bunch of tricks with like the egg on the spatula and they egg, crack it in the roll. air. Yeah, and then they did spray or spraying sake in people's mouths. Yep. Sake. But they didn't do the they didn't do the volcano. So I had no idea what you were talking about mid shoot, and I was like, "This is weird." <laughs> have you watched a video about it since? No, so I you, just I just trusted you. You didn't get your money's worth, Tyler. Yeah, well, I didn't. And then for and it. then what they do is after it lights on fire, there's a bunch of smoke or like exhaust that comes out of the top of the onion, mm -hmm. and then they when they they slide it and they go choo choo. <laughs> Because it looks like a smoke like coming a, out yeah, of the engine. The train. Yeah. Yep. So you have to maybe watch a video. Okay. I'd be interested interested to see if anyone in the comments puts, you know, what what like the craziest s'more combo that they've done before. Yeah. Wasabi ranch is and, way and, out and there. And there's people in the comments saying you got to do like Reese's Cup and stuff, which yeah. I've done. Yep. That's been done before, right? But yeah. We wanted to switch it up. Just maybe try something a little different. I don't know if uh, Kit Kat wasabi peas ranch was oh, really what we were that was for. another bit that i cut out of the video you guys did an office reference about kit kats on the final <laughs> s'more uh give me a break give me a break give me a break with that uh, fancy kit, kit, feast fancy feast <laughs> I wouldn't know that one. <laughs> he Office. just said Kit Kat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just finished the jingle. So yeah, it was uh it was Nard Dog. Nard Dog. Do you know who the Nard Dog is? No. You're the Nard Dog. Yep. I am the Nard Dog. That's not bad. He's cool. Okay. Uh he goes up and down throughout the whole That's show. That's true. He he does go rogue uh, for a while. That is kind of Ryan. Uh <laughs> no, the Nard Dog uh is trying to remember what the Kit Kat theme song is, and he can't remember which candy or like what products it's for. So he says a bunch of other ones, and he settles on Fancy Feast. He's like, nailed it. <laughs> so I, I literally just played into the bit by finishing it out for you, yeah. even though you yep. purposely didn't. Yeah, because that's the bit. Is he's like, yeah, break me off a piece of that. Mm, I can't think of it. And then Jim's like, don't tell him. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to pull that episode up later. Well, I just need to sit down and watch The Office because there's I, at this point, no, at this the point, amount of mileage though. we're getting out of Ryan not seeing The Office jokes. He can't I, watch it. I don't it want now. him to watch no. The Office. Yeah. No. So you got out of that one, Ryan. Um, yeah, I, we have one more video with Charlie that's going to get posted in the next week or two. This one is kind of similar. It's a to great s'mores. warm up. It's a great warm up. The s'mores, s'mores is a, a good great, one. Yeah, great yeah, warm yeah. up for the next one. I'll tell you this though. This was my favorite video to shoot for the whole week. And I think it will do the best because I was, it was the first time in a long time I was actually dying laughing. We had to retake sh cuts because I was laughing and you could hear it in the audio. <laughs> really? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Tyler's good. just giggling like a little girl. Miles, here's a question for you. Uh, uh, yeah. Here, go ahead, Ryan. Is it bananas? To, to have a s'more craving outside of lake season, outside of the fire, when you're sitting at home during the winter time and making a s'more in the microwave? I feel like, um, well, I don't think I'd do it in the microwave. You gotta do it on the burner on the oven. The burner? Straight on the burner? No, you put it on a little, on a, like a little stick or a fork, and then you roast it just like you would on the fire. If you got a propane yeah. stove. Yep. But if you don't have a propane stove, yeah, like one of those, you could put it the oven on broil, and if you got a long enough stick, you could stick it in there, and yeah. almost like it's like a toaster, you know. You could just throw some grease on top of the deal, Gre little grease fire going up. Yeah, you just do, a, over just top do of a, a small grease <laughs> fire. <in> yeah, <laughs> a contained grease fire. I would say the only time that I would maybe be like, ah, oh, s'more would be good, um, is like at Christmas. Sure. But even then, I need like the chocolate to be like, uh, like white peppermint chocolate. Yeah, you know what I mean. That Seasonal. actually sounds pretty fucking it sounds good. Sounds really good. I think that was a good thing about the s'more video. There is one s'more in there that is an actual good idea. Oh yeah, the the puppy chow one yeah. was delish. Yeah. The what do they call them? Muddy, Muddy buddies. Muddy buddies. I yep. never heard that before. Yep. I only know puppy chow. Me too. 
Okay. I've never made a s'more outside of lake season. Oh, me so, neither. But um, it, I, if I was going to choose a time, that would be the time. Put Agreed. it on the list. Agreed? A Midwest Chef video. Do you yeah, agree? 100%. We agree. He concurs. We disagreed again. We agree. Peppermint, uh, her, uh, peppermint Hershey bar little squares. All right. Now you got to make it a thing. That's the next Midwest Chef s'mores. Two. I don't know if there's going to be a two. With thousand. wasabi peas and ranch on <laughs> the top. The audience is hoping that there's not <laughs> Never a two. A two. Well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we'll put it in the notebook. We'll put it in the notebook. We'll at least put it on the list. Um, Even though the list is scattered out throughout that notebook. Yeah. Mm. It would be interesting to see like just the list of all the videos that we made and or just had the idea or you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. all the ones, the ones that we axed tweaked. or yeah. axed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That'd be kind of fun. Maybe I'll have, uh, maybe I'll have uh, Giselle compile my notebook. Can you imagine how much of a nightmare <laughs> that, that would fun. be? He's got to transcribe them all. Yeah. In, there's in, just in shit everywhere in this notebook. Yeah. None of it makes sense except to Miles. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> that's probably how uh, you and... Max and Charlie felt when I pitched the idea of the s'more video to you guys is no one knows what's going on but me. So well, mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be an actual like teach you how to make real gourmet s'mores. Yeah, but that's not really I feel like that's not really the shtick that mm-hmm. we have on the page. It's usually uh, you think you're about to, like you think you're about to hop into a real unbiased review mm-hmm. and then it's very biased. So right. Um, kind of like the beer can that was it the beer can stuffing you did around Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, that was actually that was, that was I forgot about that video. That was a great video. <laughs> yeah, that was good. If you guys haven't seen that, I'll, we'll end this segment by saying you got to go search on Facebook or YouTube Bushlight Stuffing. <laughs> um, you could wait until November too, but um, I dialed up a. I'm not to brag. Pretty good <laughs> recipe. It was delicious. That didn't get enough mileage. Page page wasn't as big. Page as wasn't now. big enough because yep. that was a that was a great bit by me. So not to brag, but we're gonna take our first break, and uh, we're gonna head into a segment that uh, we don't really have a, f- a good name for it yet. But it's basically some of our favorite. Uh, the beer industry has a lot of weird and quirky products that get put out to help you facilitate your drinking. (laughs) Basically the beer industry sells beer and then they also sell a bunch of stuff to help you uh, ease the, the, basically make it easier for you to consume alcohol. Yep. And uh, we're going to talk about some of our favorite ones that uh, we like and or use maybe all the time or maybe if used once in our life. But uh, we'll talk about that after our first break. Guys, now is a great time to talk about one of our partners, Holiday Gas Station. We are big, big time holiday gas station guys here at the You Bet Your Radio podcast. Right now, we're actually sipping on some some fresh, hot holiday coffee right here. Mm. 100% Arabica beans. Oh, my God. God, that's hot. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the It's one of their staples, really. They uh, have great coffee. If you're someone that likes having a uh, cup of joe in the morning, you got to swing it, and you got to swing through uh, holiday gas stations because they have some of the best coffee around. Uh, I know that not only with the kind that we got, they have multiple different stations with yeah. multiple different flavors and roasts. So... I mean, it's really the the uh, a la carte of coffee at gas stations, um, and, and I love that because I like having a nice cup of Joe, especially as the fall mornings. You know, the gets a little bit chillier Ooh, out. As Ryan would say, the fall, the crisp, the crisp fall, fall air. air, the crisp fall air. <laughs> you gotta head to Holiday Gas Station, get yourself a cup of coffee, and they got everything you need. I mean, there's no question that if uh, you think a gas station has it, Holiday has it. So. You got to go go um, to Holiday Gas Station, get yourself a cup of joe in this crisp fall air. And uh, all I know is this is going down easy. <laughs> Speaking of going down easy, Tyler, we like to consume a little bit of beer here on this. Yeah. Uh, here and there. Betcha. A little bit. Oh, also Holiday. 
uh, if they got beer, if it's uh, in a state where they allow beer at the gas station. So perfect. You grab a cup of coffee and you grab a 30 rack, a bushel of bush lattes, a latte and a latte, a latte and a latte. And you're having a latte fun. fun. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Hey, <laughs> this coffee's got me going. I'm dialed in. <laughs> If you want to be dialed in like me, I must have had holiday coffee before that stream last, last night, night when I was dialed in. Woo! Wow, I haven't seen you like this in a while. <laughs> this is That's awesome. Right. That's right. Shout awesome. out holiday. Uh, yeah, so uh, not to brag, <laughs> feeling a little dialed today. Um, so anyways, we consume a lot of beer here on this uh, podcast, as you probably have gathered over the year and a half-ish. Um, but the industry loves giving us things and different ways to consume beer. Tyler, I know that you were like especially excited about this segment. He's got this grin on his face. I, f I truly believe that Tyler in college was the epitome of what these products are. Yes. I, I was a little bit of a different guy in college. Tyler, <laughs> Tyler would go. He would go donate plasma uh, to get his seventy bucks that was, just so he could buy his next uh, no, no, beer no. gadget. And there was a double edged sword. He would purposely go donate before he was going to go out, so he could catch up faster, catch Cheaper a bigger drunk. buzz. Yeah, <laughs> yep. yeah. Cheaper drunk, Tyler. So you were making money to spend less because you didn't have to drink as much. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Smart guy. Business one on one. So Tyler. okay, we got to maybe give out a few examples of what we even mean by this. So. Beer consumption devices, um, just thing that the beer industry has put out to facilitate drinking beer. Let's go through a few of our favorites. I'll go first, naturally, because I don't got, want you guys to take my one. <laughs> this, is, this is my number one without question. I actually received this as a stocking suffer, as most of us do Ooh, receive mm -hmm. these items. Um, or it's like a drunk Amazon late night purchase type of thing. I received this as a stocking stuffer probably, you know, I want to say six falls ago. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like winter, 22 winter. years old six, or so. Six, six, no, winter. six falls ago. Yeah. Um, six, yeah, because it was still fall. It wasn't quite winter. Um, I guess it was winter, but I'm going to go six with falls. falls ago. Six falls ago. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We got, we got to do a segment eventually six ex falls ago. explaining those bits. <laughs> no, no, no. Six falls ago. Um, and there's no way to go around it other than it's. it was called the Shakuli. What? The shower koozie <laughs> that sticks to the side of the shower. Okay. It was elite. For so I had the one. So there's the one with the <laughs> suction cup. Yep. But I had the one that there was a, a it would come with a sticker with Velcro on it. You stick that to the uh, shower, and then there was Velcro on the koozie, and you just would stick it to the wall, <laughs> so you could be having shower beers. Well, that's smart, because the, the big thing with shower beers, you don't want to get soap in it, and if you're setting it on those shelves next to all your soap, yep. there's a you chance gotta of that. Yep. You got to put it up yeah, high. Yeah, you don't want to get wa shower water on the rim either right. when you're taking a, taking a drink. Six falls ago, though, that was primetime shower beer oh, yeah. for you. And 22 for years old, 21, mm -hmm. 22 years old. Uh, feeling good. Yep. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, my, my brother-in-law gave it to me. It was probably the best gift I've gotten in recent history. Um, and you're not a huge gift guy. Now the downside to the one that I got. So once he took the Velcro off of the thing, cause I moved, you kind of like, don't just have a koozie with the one side of the Velcro and the other side doesn't stick to anything. <laughs> so it's kind of a one and done with that one. Um, but I'm a big time shower koozie guy. Uh, shower beers just hit different. Everyone knows that, especially if if you're day drinking. Yep. And you got to take a shower before you go out. Mm -hmm. <sighs> no, love it. no better way to you got it when you pregame. You're going to have to shower before you go out. Correct. So why not start the pregame in the shower? That's right. A time, or, time or when I work concrete. Oh, yeah. Work concrete. You get done at five. Mm -hmm. You'd uh, you have to shower because there's no you. There's no way to work concrete and not get dirty. By the way, yeah. Like I have tried to like stay as clean as possible working. <laughs> it's impossible. So you got to shower, and uh, you, you slap a beer in that in that koozie, and you just get to get the evening rolling with that. You said either. It, you guys have the shower koozie on your list. I did not. Did not. No, I did not. 
It's called the Shakuzi. Uh, the one that I had was the Shakuli. Shak- wow. Uh, <laughs> great branding. On Sophistication. <laughs> Shakuli. Uh, great on wordplay. Uh, I like that, Miles. Big shower beer guy uh, back in the college days. Haven't had a shower beer in a while. But uh, might have to bring that back. Might have to bring that back. One podcast morning, hit the morning shower, maybe have a shower beer. <laughs> oh, I shower we're podcast in the shower. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, we could probably get that we done. Could, we could do that. Uh, one of one of my more favorite uh, beer drinking gadgets, I guess you could say. That's a good way to put it. Is mm-hmm. uh, have you guys ever seen like the neoprene sleeves? that yep. have the strap on them it kind of fits around you like uh the, you know if you if you're throwing a gun on, uh, around your shoulder yeah, in hunting the, season it's the beer sling the beer sling that over going with a standard backpack mm-hmm. that's just big and bulky and, and it's weighted down because it's clanking around yeah there's just beer Except hanging for the fact the bottom. that you look you look like you're walking around like Nicolas Cage and you just stole a declaration of independence <laughs> yes that's yes. the downside this, or the upside where a jean jacket maybe uh and you look like Nicolas Cage running around Halloween. That'd be a great bit. That would be a great costume idea, actually, with I the like beer it. sling. Um, those things are clutch because, for one, have you neoprene, act, have you actually ever owned one of those? Yeah, and you used it. Yes, hundred percent. Do you still own it? Uh, I still own it. I haven't used it in about six. You got to bring it to the office, and we'll take a photo and and show the people what it looks like. Yeah. Okay. Have you seen the same exact idea? But it's the beer belt. It's the same sling, oh, yeah. I've but seen you just that. put it around your Not waist. as fashionable, though. No. Also, it looks like a weird okay, fanny Okay, we'll pack. get into the other thing. My brother-in-law, he loves getting me beer gadgets now that I'm yeah. thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. He got me another beer gadget, but we'll get into that in a sec. Um, I have not had the full Declaration of Independence case yep. that you're talking about. I have had the, it's called the double up, where basically you can fit two, it's a koozie that's longer that can fit two pounders of beer in it. So while you're drinking one, then the other one's staying cold inside. And then when that's done, you pull that one out. The downside so more, yeah. is you got to have two in there at all times. More so like the Bill of Rights, kind of like the Bill of Rights. Yeah, maybe just the Bill of Rights. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah. I kind of like that, though. Uh, two pounders. I mean, you can you can sip on those for a while. But then you need you need the sling to re-up your beer. Yep. So does it come out gone. the top or do they come out the bottom? There's a zipper. There's yep. a zipper so down the side. you can take them out wherever. Yep. Easy to pack in there, ba 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 ba, and it's and that, then, that's all it is. Is ba 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 ba. <laughs> yep. That's if all. I close my eyes, I think I was listening to an infomercial for the what is it called? The, <laughs> the, the beer sling, the cannon, the the declaration the, sling, the beer RPG. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It, right. Another good thing about that, it's also insulated. Yes. So exactly. All Neoprene. staying. Yep. They're. It's like a koozie for all of your beers. Yeah. And if oh, in wintertime you're wearing a heavy coat, you just throw it underneath your coat and uh, no one's going to try and steal your beer because you're we wearing We got to get you in a Nicolas Cage outfit with the... With the beer sling. <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be great. We're going to steal the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> but first, Bush. Bush. <laughs> okay, Tyler, let's hear what you got. So this is one of my favorites and for only a specific time of the year, it would be tailgating season in the Midwest, which unfortunately I probably won't get to use this year, but it's the koozie that's also a mitten. Oh yeah. Are those practical? I've never actually used one. So here's the thing. When you're tailgating, you never set your beer down anyway. We have one here. We have one? Yeah. We'll have to try it out. So yeah, so you never set your beer down anyway. So your beer's staying cold, but your hand's staying warm. And you're constantly drinking. So you have one free hand. You're not doing it. You're not don't need to do that anything with true. two hands when you're tailgating. You can eat a hot dog with one hand. Yep. Yeah. Tyler, that was actually under one of my least favorites. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I don't know why. I just feel I'm, restricted with one hand trying to, you know, take your phone out of your pocket, trying to grab another beer, trying to if it almost feels like you got a straight jacket on but yes. for your hand. It sounds like a straight jacket for your hand. And it's and not like stresses, it's hard to take off. But that stresses me out. Why not just wear a normal glove and just hold on to the beer? Because then there's no koozie on your beer. It's also a koozie. Well, you can put a koozie on your beer and then also wear that's, a glove. That's two things instead of just one. But here's the thing is if you put a koozie on your beer, you actually don't need to wear a glove because that'll keep your hand not cold. Not on the outside. I'm talking like late season tailgating. You're out there. It's maybe a playoff game. And it's I'm gonna vote 15 for degrees. Your hand is toasty. You don't want to set your beer down. Your hand is toasty just and you got a, and a constant on. buzz on. Just put a piece of Velcro on your I'll, glove. Hey, just, just like the shakuzi. Take the shakuli and make it into yeah. shawarmi. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you should just put the Velcro on your chest. 
Yes. And then you just Velcro it to your chest so it's always with you. It's always within hand's reach. But then you run into the problem of bending over. Yeah. Well, and that's kind of like the one we talked about yesterday. Also under one of my least favorites is the the the, the pouch on it. Well, on hold on. Before we get into that, because I want to get into okay. that. Okay. okay. Yep. Um, what happens if, when you're in the sh- straight jacket, <laughs> koozie glove, what happens when this is, happens? What happens when you're eating a hot dog uh, and <laughs> your buddy says, hey, Tyler, catch, and he chucks you a football? You're you, screwed. You dodge it. Because what I would do. Say, not now, homie. I'm trying to eat and drink. Leave no, me alone. No, what I would do is I would be standing next to a table. I go, boom, set it down, one hand it, no problem, <laughs> football. I don't have time for flashiness. I don't, I'm there I don't to want to be. I don't want to be stuck in the sh- straight jacket. All right. See, it's to each their own. So uh, that one's actually, I am okay. out on the sh- Can Can I talk sh- about one more that sh- I sh- like? Straight jacket. Sh- straight jacket. <laughs> before we get into the, the bad stuff. <laughs> Which show the, in the, front of everything? The, the Schmitten. 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 Can I talk about one more that sure, I Tyler. like? So, yeah, then we got to get into a couple of ours, Tyler. So I'm we're sorry, the ones I'm that are sorry. on the camera. So. <laughs> I'm on a camera now. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell Jake to cut that camera. This, just, this, just for this part. Yeah. yeah. Um, Give it to us, Tyler. So the tough, the reason I didn't say this one first, because it's more used for booze than it is for beer. But it's the hollowed out golf club with the dispenser on the end. So you just go, you fill it up. And then it's just a spout, like a pump. And then the booze comes out of the golf club. And it's it's also insulated, so it keeps it cold. And that's your birdie juice I know what you're day. talking about. Yeah. Grandpa, I do like that. Grandpa Dave has one. Yeah. And that's where he has all his fireball in when we play. Yeah, that's cool. I, I mean, that's cool. I mean, it's completely over the top. Just, yeah, exactly. Because it's just funny. Because it's like you could just... You could absolutely just throw a flask in your bag. Right. But yeah. instead, it's just another... Rid- I mean, there's just mm-hmm. something about human nature... <laughs> That we love to consume alcohol in unnecessary ways. Right. <laughs> That's just, there's just nothing better. Like, we get bored of the flask. Mm-hmm. We get bored of just drinking out of the can with our normal hand. We need to put a, we need to sew a mitten into a straight jacket <laughs> and put a beer in there and drink it. We it's, can't just take a just, backpack or a small cooler to yeah. a party. We, we need the Declaration of Independence. We need mix, we need something different in our lives you know yes we can't, have, we can't we be can, repetitive we, we can't just set the the beer on the like one little corner of the right. shower with a little extra uh-uh. air we got to stick it to the side of the shower uh-huh. it's, just, it's human nature um it's it's only human natural <laughs> ryan wouldn't get <laughs> nope. that joke he's never no. seen the office it sounds funny though um so ryan you were talking about the sweatshirt yes. sleeve yep i could not be further off of this product I think we share the same idea. This is worse than the sh- straight jacket. The sh- hoodie. The sh- hoodie. <laughs> where basically <laughs> it's a, there's a little slit, right? Right above the pocket. Yep. And yep. you're supposed to be like, you're supposed to be able to hold like a beer can or a, a beer bottle. Yep. In your sweatshirt. Not convenient at all because the, the, either it's the, the can or, or bottle weighs too much. And it just sags and it like pulls on your shirt right. the whole time. Or if you even lean forward a little bit, the whole thing just tips forward. Not fashionable. Also, your belly button's going to get cold. If it's winter time out, <laughs> you don't want your belly button That's to get true. cold. I, yep. Nothing's worse than a cold belly button. <laughs> right, in, right. In so two strikes for the shahoodie. Um, and, at, you know, at the same time, like if you put your, your phone and your keys in your hoodie pocket, that's just, that's the most uncomfortable thing ever. So why would you want to put a, like, oh, a that's full beer so bottle? true. Nothing's worse than having too much stuff in your pouch on your, on your hoodie. Cause then it just yanks on that yeah. like, neck mm-hmm. and it's just weird. Yeah. And then it pulls the shirt down uh, underneath the hoodie and you, your chest is cold now. Yeah. Now I your would, chest is cold. I would definitely take the sh- straight jacket over the sh- hoodie. I would too. I'm going to just start drinking with the sh- straight jacket from now on. Yeah. Start, with a sh- hoodie I'm on. I'm going to start streaming one-handed <laughs> with a sh- straight jacket on my other hand. Yep. So back to uh, the the gift, that I, another gift that I got from my brother-in-law. Well, hopefully he doesn't listen to this because <laughs> that one, I don't think, I think he just, the point of the, the, the gift was that he was getting me a ridiculous beer-consuming thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one didn't work as good. So... Um, big time win on the Shakuli, uh, big time fail. I, I don't even know what it was. Remember what it was called, but basically it was a neoprene sleeve that was kind of like the belt that you stick it in, 
but it would roll up and Velcro. So it looked like a revolver, like where you load all the bullets oh, yeah. into a revolver mm. yep. when it would roll up and then you could just carry that and it would hold like seven beers or you could freeze a water bottle and stick that in the middle and it would keep all the beers cold around it. That's not bad, actually. In theory, practical, practicality, not bad. Though. It sounds Walk, like it would fall apart really easy. Fall apart, but also it's just pretty inconvenient to carry that thing around. Well, it's kind of like you're carrying I'd a dish. I'd much rather be carrying the Declaration of Independence <laughs> sleeve over the, the, the revolver. Yeah, it's kind of like you're carrying a platter of drinks. Like you, you almost, because if you're carrying it sideways, correct me if I'm wrong, if you're going like this, that's going to fall. Something's going to fall out. Yeah, it, well, that's where the handle was on the side. Like that. Okay. You know, yep. like, so it would be like you tip the beers on its side, but it just, it was a, in theory, a great idea. Poor Practicality, execution. the execution was bad. Much rather take the Declaration of Independence any day of the week. The Shabir belt. Yeah. <laughs> it was like the Shabir X. belt, but it was, you, it, what, you, it wasn't long enough to fit around as a belt. So you just had to roll it up into this. Like look like a revolver, like uh, what Just do you call the that? The chambers on there. The chamber, yeah. Yep. yep. The revolver, the sh- the sh- revolver <laughs> chamber. <laughs> sh- revolver. Uh, interesting, Miles. So you, and Miles would rather carry around the Declaration or the Bill of Rights, the double pounder yep. holder, than the sh- revolver. Sh- revolver. Chamber. So Tyler, <laughs> what do you got? What do you? What are, a, I know you I, got a list. For, I know you got a list. Of, I what have else like you got? seven written over here. Do you have any more? I mean, I could think of some. I have another one. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Ryan. You're on camera. So one of my <laughs> one of my favorite uh, gadgets that I've I've actually only used once, never owned one, is the beer helmet. That's where this all started. The sh- helmet. The OG. When and I, we talked about something very similar on last podcast with, where I exercised my SpongeBob knowledge of the yep. Schmitty Wen Jember yeah. Schlamben Schneider. Jig and Mike Church. Yep. He was number one. Yep. The reason he was number one is he had a beer drinking hat. That's mm-hmm. what it was. Those hats, when they pop up in movies, when they show up on a TV show, I want to be. I've that never guy. had the privilege of wearing one and, and having one and using one. So the problem with those is similar to the Shahudi. If you bend over, your beer's spilling, but it's going to fall onto well, your lap. Well, be an athlete, Tyler. Bend at the you knees. Just go like this. Bend at the knees and the hips, not the back. Come on, man. Well, if you bend over, your head follows, and then you're spilling beer, unless the beers sometimes are about half life, full. Tyler, so you got to chug a little right sometimes away. Sometimes in life, Tyler, you got to bend your knees and be flexible. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a, that's the life lesson and that's for the yep. podcast. <laughs> that's the title. Um. I just feel like I, I would feel like such a badass with one of those things. <laughs> you're double, you're double hey, hosing it. Okay, this is Tyler. This is your duty for this next week. You need to order those on Amazon, and Ryan and I are going to do an entire podcast yes. wearing those. Okay. Yep. Next week, the sh- helmet. Um, <laughs> we got to get one of that. We got to get two of those in. Okay. Yeah. And if preferably if it said number one on the front, that would be great. Also, everybody's sh- helmet is different because everyone's got different stickers on them. Yep. You can literally customize it however you want. So we might have a little arts and cl- uh, arts and crafts day yep. with the sh- helmets. Um, feel like a couple badasses on the podcast and uh, we'll double tube it. But also it's like, it's like one of those things. So I imagine that the people that wear those to like parties and stuff. Are a little bit like the people when you go bowling <laughs> that start throwing the ball between their legs and doing like the yes. windmill throw it. You don't know when I'm going to release it. Yep. Watch yep. out. Yep. Um, they show up to a party and they're like, look at me. I'm so silly. I've got two beers on my head and I don't have to touch it with my hand. Like that's, that's I imagine that who would wear that? That's why I've never owned one. I'm not that guy. Yeah. But I think it'd be it cool. takes a special breed. Right. It definitely takes a special mm-hmm. breed. To pull it off at like a party, but we're gonna do it on the podcast. Do you write that down, Tyler? I got it. I don't. This is actually something that I want us to fall through <laughs> on. We're not great at falling through on things. Um, I have okay. I'll yeah, we'll get into that next segment. But <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> great one, Ryan. Couple big time sh- helmet guy. Yeah. Yep. All right, Tyler. Rapid fire here. What do you got? Okay. The one there's this guy in college that would bring this to every party. He had a mini keg backpack that had the tap attached to kind it, kind of like the Heineken mini keg. That's, yep, it, that's exactly what he would put in it. Which one I don't like Heineken, so gross beer. You did Two. if it was free though. 
Yeah, I mean, I college. Too. You're not turning down free yeah. beer. Let's be honest. So he's just roaming around, and it had double spouts. So he had like holsters for the. So it kind of looked like he had a jet pack. Yes, almost, and so he pulled it out, and he'd just be filling up beers, and it was the weirdest thing. But also a little bit cool, Tyler. I would never I'm, wear one myself. Tyler, I hate to burst your bubble, but we probably had two Heineken kegs in there. That's no, he didn't. It was a single one. How do you do that? I don't know. He, I, I, I googled it too, and I was like, "Yep, it's, it's." <laughs> Tyler's just absolutely hammered at this college party. He's like, "Where did you?" He probably this? thought he saw two. <laughs> <laughs> he probably he thought he's had two spouts, but it was just a guy just had one. He's like, whoa, man. I'm going to Google it. <laughs> How do you guys. got two spouts coming out of that one keg? Can I get some? And that was, just that was six falls another. ago, Tyler. Hey, six, well, hey, not hey quite can six. I get some? Sure. I, I'll just... Let's just write it in my mouth. <laughs> Tyler's like going like this, and the guy's arm is way over here. Yeah. He thinks he's on the second arm. <laughs> he just can't. He can't Tyler, see straight. He cannot confirm nor deny that. I was just right gonna there. say uh, that he's now, very possibly he's could now have now happened. Yeah. In his brain, he's like, <laughs> "Yep, damn it." Yep. The numbers are flying around my head right now. Is how many spouts were there? Yeah. Um, so want me to just rattle off the rest of my list? You should actually like Facebook message that kid because you know that you don't act. You're not actually friends with this guy, right? Right. right. You don't have his phone number. Nope. Kind of weird to DM him on Instagram. So you got to send him a Facebook message and ask him if he had the double spout or not. Okay. Or you were just absolutely blitzed out of your mind. All right. He might even still have it. It might be in his in his attic somewhere where he just needs to hold on to that little piece of college yeah. life. He actually just probably wears it chest style and sits on the couch and still drinks out of it. <laughs> That's a good idea. Not bad. Um, should I rattle off the rest of the list? Yep. All right. The Octabong. The bong, the beer bong with, oh, eight, yep. with eight tubes. Yep. Um, How many, is it like you put eight beers in it then? It's got a big enough funnel? Yeah. So it's a massive ass funnel with a stand. It comes on a stand. It looks like a, a froth course. Oh, that's kind of cool. Um, chain link, whatever the, yeah. the, the goal on the froth course. And so also... Then, if you're on like a little bit of a, a fill, and this could be wrong, the science may not add up. I, I, I would know though because I am scientist. a scientist. Yep. Um, it might not add up, but what if you're on this like a little bit of a slant of a hill, and this one guy gets like three beers in his it, one right two, in the face, mm. or or just pours out the top and you just get yep. straight in the face. Yep. Is that do you know? Can you confirm or deny? I know the distribution was definitely not even because there were some people that would get like half a beer and be done while the rest of the people just finished the rest of the funnel. Yeah. They just weren't getting any more beer. I think that that's what we call uh, uh, engineering and uh, you guys got to get a level out there. You got to get a, you, you set it down and you got to pull out your buddy with the two hoses better have two levels. <laughs> All right. Uh, a little bit to the left. Okay. Okay. We're good. We're good. Put a match book, match box underneath the one leg. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Next one. Yep. The, okay. So I talked to you guys about this a couple days ago, but it's like a fanny pack that goes underneath your pants. So people would use this at oh, country yeah. music festivals that I used to go to. Because you can't bring beer into the concert. So they put the fanny pack on under their pants, and then you unzip your pants, and the op- the funnel was right where your zipper was. So it looked like you're pissing, but you're really just filling your beer cup. Yep. Up. Uh, cl- there's many. It, this goes in the category of the concealed flask mm-hmm. category. Yes. Yep. Right? There's that. There's the, you were talking about that chicks are putting shots in fake tampon yep. things. Yep. Tam- the tampon tube. Yep. There's the cell phone um, case flask. Cell phone yep. case. There's the binoculars flask. Yep. Um, there was literally, I was at WeFest one year and we, we, I was not to brag. Um, uh, I was in the like eighth row of the concert. VIP. Not to brag. Not to brag. Yeah. 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 Um, platinum level. Platinum yeah. level. Not yeah. to brag. Yep. Um, and there was a chick on row in front of us that had binoculars on. I'm like, it's a little suspicious because you're in the seventh <laughs> row. I don't think you need those binoculars. But hey, worked for him. It's kind of like the kid walking across campus with a fat backpack on. It's like 11 p.m. at night. Yeah. No, he's you going did not to the just, library. You did not yep. just leave the library. Oh, yeah. You are going to another dorm room no, to get your studies with your buddies. Big time, big time study, <laughs> studious. <laughs> Very studious. So Tyler, with the fanny pack, depending on you know if you got vodka in there, if you got whiskey in there, it, it could look like you're you're just very hydrated or very dehydrated. Right. Great. And I think the thing is, no one's gonna try to look at you peeing. 
Also, no. though, it so might be a little are, weird if, like, you know, like, you can't see what's going on. But if you see a guy who's peeing and both of his arms are down, if you're just waiting in line and he turns around and he's got a cup and he just was peeing. Right. And he starts drinking. You're like, oh, God. Emergency drug test. You stay away from that guy that, and then he doesn't get caught. Yeah, is that guy drinking his own piss? It's sterile. He's trying to get hydrated. Yeah, it's it's sterile, sterile and I like the taste. <laughs> Ryan wouldn't know that joke. He's never seen dodgeball. No, I, I absolutely <laughs> have. <I'm just> <laughs> um, okay, a couple more. What do you got? I only have two more. So Perfect. The This one's for Ryan. Um, I hate this one. But it is a beer mug with the hand grip thing to build hand strength. So there's, I, I had a buddy that had one. So it was just a hand grip thing mounted to a mug. And what so the? you would drink beer, but also grip your, get your grip also, workout anyone in. anyone who Holy actually shit. does the like little hand things to do grip strength, <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't Relax. know. I don't know about you. Relax. Yep. <laughs> yep. But also, that thing was made for Ryan. Because if anyone, <laughs> if anyone yeah. in this office is doing hand grip exercises, it's, it's gonna be Ryan. So what? I, what I don't understand is just drink your beer faster and then just and then just crush your. So beer. Literally, there was no. It didn't change your consumption level. It just changed. Just think about how much your hand shakes when you do one of those. Your beer would be right. spilling everywhere. I, I mean, I'm not about it at all. Not even back when you had a uh, like a home gym in your back yard. Back when you were a CrossFitter. No, I was not doing grip strength. I can tell you that much. All right, what else? What's the last one? Last one is that little bottle cap opener that keeps the bottle cap in it and then shoots it out like a gun. <laughs> That's kind of cool, actually. No, it's so stupid. Yep. <laughs> so, I've it's, seen those, and it has, it on, has been like, God, that would be like kind of cool to have for, just laying around. For about 15 yeah. minutes, yeah. that's fun. And, right. then, and then all of a sudden, someone takes it a little too far and shoots someone in the eye, and mm-hmm. then everyone's pissed at you. Right. Well, also, to, in order to get ammo, you just have to have bottle caps laying around. Uh, you can't are, drink beer. So the thing is, the only way to load it is popping the top right. off your bottle with it. And then that loads. I don't think you can put it in there just with it being uh, loose. All I, I got to say, that's, it's one of the, that's so stupid. Yeah. But I, it's kind of cool. Kind of cool. It's one of those gimmicky things that looks really cool on Instagram ads. But I don't think it would be cool in real life. So sure. also, this this guy's also probably one of the guys that is the the beer helmet guy. Maybe. Yeah, he's you got know? that. And hey, hold on, let me open that for you. <laughs> and he looks at he looks at his buddy like, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Should I do it? I'm gonna do it. <laughs> oh yeah, this this is just my bottle opener I carry everywhere with me. Why does it look like a gun? And he goes, and they go, here you go. And then he looks at his buddy again, and then just. <laughs> right in the throat. It's the same Shoots kid. The guy right right in, the in the throat. throat. Yeah. It's the same kids that were shooting paper wedgies in high school. Yep. Oh yeah. What? What? Those little paper wedgies. You never shot those with rubber bands. Paper wedgies. Uh, you like roll it like uh, fold a piece oh, of paper. Like, up, oh yeah. Paper you up, fold it in half. Fold it in yeah, half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real tight, so it's like thick. I didn't yeah. know those were called wedgies. I didn't either. No, no, that's what we call them at school. Oh, those suckers were I deadly too. Yeah. I didn't even have a name for. It, I don't think. I thought you maybe you were talking about paper footballs, but that's a whole nother mm-hmm. thing. Miles was a D1 paper football kicker back in well, middle D, school. D2. D2. No, D1. D1. Oh. I went D1 in paper football, D2 in regular football. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, on top of the uh, the bottle opener, the flip-flops with the bottle opener. Yeah, the bottle. Oh, the sunglasses, God. too. Uh, the reef. Remember, you you, yeah. maybe, you maybe head into a pack sun back in the yep. day, and you'd get yourself some reefs with the bottle opener. And, mm-hmm. and like, I had a... a, 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 a I had, then they, they actually, they started doing the flask as well. There was like, you could have a shot of whiskey or any booze inside your sandal. They had a, uh, the reef had a pair of those. Imagine that but, popping uh, on your foot. Yeah. And then, uh, or sticking your mouth on something that's been on the ground, ground all, yeah. all day. Yeah. Um, but like you were like, you're like 14 years old and you're like, mom, I want these flip flops. <laughs> this is a bottle opener on the bottom. It's like. What are you gonna use that for? You're not you're not drinking that much booze. Or classic when root beers. You're not drinking that much root beer at yeah. fourteen. <laughs> Mom, I need it for my root beer. <laughs> uh, those are ridiculous. I don't want I don't want to have to take a shoe off to open a beer up. Mm-hmm. Plain and simple. Those guys, the guys who had those that were like twenty one when that was popular, you know, they were your classic uh, flowered board shorts guys mm-hmm. and puka shell necklaces yep with uh, <laughs> and then they had the reef sandals with the little bottle opener with a backwards fox hat over and, the eyebrows and maybe an american fighter shirt yep oh yeah mm-hmm. i can picture that guy right now 
the the sunglasses were also they were white. They weren't black. The were oil just, the oil rig ones. The oil rig ones. Yep. yep. You're talking about the chonk ones. Yeah. Yep. It's just the thick ass size. <laughs> yeah. Yep. The clear ones. Yeah. Oh yeah. The cl- with the blue. The logo. blue logos. Yep. Oh All right. god. Any more? Any more ones to throw out there? That's it for me. We might have, honestly, we might have to do a little more research and have a part two at some point. Yeah, yeah, because there's so many. I mean, that's there's literally people their right. only job is to beer gadgets, beer gadgets. There's it up. definitely microphone flasks somewhere where we can uh-huh. just have flasks in our mics. Yeah. Who says I don't already, Tyler? Ooh. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to take our next break, and we're going to give you guys a little fantasy football update. Um, We have a fantasy football league here at the office, and uh, we're going to talk about week one, unfortunately. And, uh, (laughs) yeah. Leave it at that. As most of you probably are playing fantasy football, we are as well. And it all, you know, you have your, you have like a, we, so I have a family league. Um, we didn't do it this year, but I had college buddies le- league. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have work leagues and we have a work league here as well here at you betcha first ever first annual. Um, <sighs> week one was tough. <laughs> week one was tough for, for some me. of us. So I'll lay out the story here. So we do our draft live on Twitch. Had a great time. T- Tyler got hammered. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I actually did not necessarily expect Tyler to get hammered. I so, said on the podcast that day, I'm getting hammered tonight. Did you really? Yes. Got a little, got a little mouthy. Got a little, got, a little cocky. So, yeah. so, so, so then, so I don't know how m- you drank. Yeah, you didn't even drink that much. You just well, I drank all day. Was the problem? I started at the podcast and didn't stop. So, Tyler, we maybe need to have a conversation with HR after this about your... Well, HR drinking was habits. drinking next to me during Live the stream. Live on Twitch. <laughs> okay, well, um, never mind. But Tyler gets a little, uh, you know, gets feeling pretty good. Uh, you can just tell because... You can just tell. It, yeah. was, it wasn't one of those things that you were necessarily, like, slurring your words or anything like that. It was just you were on one. And... Uh, Tyler is the commissioner of the league. There's Which, a lot. There's a not lot by choice. No one else wanted to do it, but he can throw out all the excuses he want. Um, <laughs> he selected to have a defense player, as many leagues do, but he didn't adjust any of the uh, things. So, like, you don't get points for tackles. You don't get points for tackles for loss. Uh, you don't get points for. Uh, it's just. It's just just picks. sacks. It's picks. Oh, and recovery. you don't and you don't get you don't get points for no, sacks. Uh-uh. It's picks, just, fumble recoveries, and safeties or something. When does that ever happen? Well, I guess the guy for the Bears got a, so, got a safety, so there's points. So Packers I'm about to pick. On us. Hey, so I'm or, about to uh, yeah. pick a defensive player, right? And I'm looking through, and I'm like, why? These defensive players are projected to score nine points for the entire year, and I'm like, <laughs> something's going off in my head. I'm like, this isn't right. So I go, Tyler. How do you score points on defense? And you're like, you're drunk. You're like, I don't know. I just said it as the default. <laughs> I just, just literally clicked ESPN's. And so then at this settings. point, I I've concurred that you, you just you can't score points with tackles and all that other stuff. So I start being like, Tyler, are you serious? Like this, the, the defense player is just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And then Tyler starts calling back at me, and we get a little bit of argument. And actually, the only way to defuse uh, drunk Tyler in that situation was for me to go, I don't know, Tyler. I'd maybe watch out. I'm the guy signing your paychecks. I'd maybe cool it a little bit right now. You just got to be quiet. Yeah. And then and then that diffuses the situation. Yep. And uh, but it doesn't matter. We we literally have a, a person on a roster. Doesn't matter until what they it do. does. Until somebody, your guy gets a safety. one pick and then gets two points, and then you win by one. <laughs> he gets a pick and gets two points. I'm telling you, when literally, be a game decided when by literally, that this year. Uh, in another league I'm in, it's like a one that's supposed to score a lot of points. Literally, if you get a tackle, a solo tackle, you get two points. Yep, Damn. and you have to get a pick. In our league to get any points at all. Or you have Aaron Aaron Donald who uh, records four sacks on the day. But unfortunately, he just doesn't get a a fumble recovery. 
He has, Bummer. He has to, be in the right place, hey, Aaron. Uh, Aaron Donald has to get a one-handed screen pass interception in order to get any points in our league. Just two, though. So that so, was our little spat at the beginning. But um, the I end and what sucks is after that, I was like, okay, Tyler, now I want to beat your ass in fantasy. <laughs> Week one, I'm playing Tyler, and I and I fucking lose. Um, but I will have to say. The the Vi- he drafted all Vikings players, which makes it even worse. He had four Vikes, four Vikes. four Vikings players on a well, eliminating the defense player. What, so then like that's still ten, four. Ten. I was just counting offensive guys. Oh, okay. So I had Kirk, yeah, the Thielen, defense too. Dalvin Cook, the defense, and and Dan Bailey, the kicker, and Eric, Eric Hendricks and their, from my yeah, defense. Yeah, so he drafted seven people. seven people on the Vikings. So I'm like, oh my god, we have to win. And th- you're looking at like, oh, the Vikings got. They got beat, Throttled. but they scored like what 35, 30, 38, like 36 to 44, or something like that. Yeah, so they lost their defense, got minus nine points, which is great. But because the Vikings can't perform when there's when the pressure's on, well, they they, they, yeah. they were down by a shitload, so then there's no pressure, so they just start scoring points and they beat me. Garbage time, maybe yeah. garbage maybe time. I'm just an elite fantasy mind and I plan for that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Your drunk-ass plan for that? (laughs) I did draft Kurt Cousins in the fifth round on accident. But here's where I'm at. Here's where I'm at. I couldn't be more relaxed. R-E-L-A-X. No reason to panic. Tyler got lucky week one. This is a long season. Wow. Wow. Until you see who you're playing this week. You're playing you? Yeah. (laughs) Ryan does have the best team. He drafted first pick. He has the best team. His team showed up this last you week. You won big, didn't you? Yeah. So very big. I, again, might be tough to go 0-2. Owen <laughs> two, but I'll see you guys in the playoffs. That's all I got. That's my all mind. that matters. Hey, so what surprised me this week? Oh, there's no playoff system though. Tyler didn't want to do the playoffs, nah, so we'll just. Do uh, it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that was just the default setting. That was yep. a default setting. No playoffs. Uh, eight week schedule. That was the one setting Done. I did change. We're gonna start calling you. Tyler just the default commissioner. <laughs> hey, <laughs> puts no effort into it. Just default man. Ryan could Easy. have been in it, but he signed up day of. Yeah, the, the Don't try and deflect yeah. this onto Ryan. Well, can we? I want to talk about this week, this upcoming week. You and we have big matchups. What? What is it? You and Ryan. Yeah, I mean, I'll win. And me and Charlie, and what did I pledge to do? I love how he's like, like <laughs> me and Charlie, like that's a big yeah, no, What did I yeah, pledge to do last podcast? I'm going to text Charlie Barons in the middle of the night every night this week and tell him that I'm coming for him. So I don't want you to do that because <laughs> that's happening. There is oh a business God. relationship that, you know, we need to continue. Well, I guess uh, you guys are going to be the only friends that I have after this fantasy uh, season because the one friend that I do have in Charlie Barron's will just he's done. He's be gone. Done. He'll leave the league. Yeah. So, Lakin almost got a win this, over, this week. Over Jake. Over Giselle. Giselle also had his two running backs go down right away. Yep. Which means, guys, we got to start throwing some trade offers at him. He needs a running back. So back. You're, I've I've been on record on this podcast saying I'm not a trade guy. So really, yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of like Miles. I'm more of a waivers guy. Well, I'm gonna try and waivers get free because agency. here's what the waivers is all in my hands. Yep, I don't want the the trade thing. It's like I have done it before and I've had it work out one time. Really, in my favor, for whatever reason. One out of how many? Probably yeah. a lot. Yeah, so. Well, I'm going to go Throw for a it. trade out, Tyler. Tyler, I'm gonna, do I'm it. Gonna. I got some leverage on the bench that uh, you might like. Yeah. To me? Mm-hmm. I don't want to trade with you. I'm trying to trade with Jake. He needs running I'll back. Trade, you don't need I, I'll trade you my defensive player. <laughs> I'll, I'll go straight up. He scored 0.0, <laughs> 0 points like the rest of the defensive so players. So we're even. League. But he's projected for 0.5 this next week. No, he's so. projected for 0. 0.032 <laughs> points. <laughs> so... T- not a bad deal. Not a bad deal if you were to accept that right now. You could accept okay. that trade. All right. That's we're a verbal trade. I'll take Eric Hendricks. <laughs> Kendrick's going to have three picks. Yeah. So uh, that's our fantasy football update. Tyler, the default commissioner. Hey, I also. AKA a- drunk ass commissioner. What I, were you going to say? I also had a guy. 
I so I had two guys from my flex position. This is like the stuff that we want to avoid is right. talking about. <laughs> right. Literally, we've talked about this podcast and yep. Ryan talked about like no one cares about your flex position. Yep. Neither one of them played, so I had a guy just not play and I still beat you. Um, I also no, had Michael Thomas who sprained his ankle and was trash. Oh, no, just that's sad. He's, he's just flexing. He's now. good. Yeah. Weird flex, uh, Tyler, yeah. but okay. That was a good yeah. flex, Ryan, but okay. <laughs> No, pun, I, pun intended. Yeah. Hey guys, just an update for you. You know, I had uh, uh, Austin Eckler as my second running back, and he actually performed pretty well. You know? <laughs> no one cares about who you drafted, Tyler. Some there's a small niche percent that do. They're gonna love it. I mean, you just drafted the Vikings five players. Vikings fans yep. that listen to this That's podcast. The, one. <laughs> the five. We got a lot of Vikings fans. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. So sorry if you're a Vikings fan. Sorry if, you know, you just, I want, we're going to end the segment like this. I want to put it in perspective for the listeners. I want all the listeners to just take a look in the mirror and just be grateful that Tyler isn't your commissioner. (laughs) Or in your fantasy league in general. Yeah. Or I'm a fine player. If you are a boss, if, if you're a boss, maybe manage some people. Or if you run a company like myself, just be grateful. Again, just put in perspective that you don't have employees that get drunk and start lipping off to you in the middle of a fantasy <laughs> draft that he screwed you on. But if you also want to defuse the situation early, take, take it miles, and, miles of advice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then just, just pull the paycheck out from underneath them and then yep. he'll just... He'll mm-hmm. get real quiet and text his girlfriend to come pick him up. Miles is going to, he's going to intercept the direct deposit. He's going to intercept it like a defensive player points. would for yeah. two points. Hey, yep. hey accountant. <laughs> <laughs> hey, accountant. Um, you know, deduct his pay by 500 bucks. <laughs> we're trying to, I'm one text away. We're trying away. to defuse the situation. One here. text away. <laughs> All right. Ryan, wrap this podcast All right, guys. up. Thanks again for listening into episode 84 of the You Bet Your Radio podcast. Before we go, we'd just like to thank Gina's Designs of the Heartland. Gina's Designs of the Heartland handcrafts, hand paints, all of the wood pine signs on our website that go great in any man cave, any garage, anywhere you're going to be enjoying an ice cold bush latte. You can find Gina's signs on our website at oubetcher.com or on Gina's website, etsy.com slash shop slash GDOT Heartland. Also, guys, the merchandise is all open on the website, ohubetcha.com. We got the hoodies. We got the crew necks. We got golf polos for the end of the year. We got everything that you guys need, and we're going to be dropping some new hats here soon. So be on the lookout of that. Uh, Tonight at 6 p.m., Miles and I are going to be streaming We Don't Know What Yet at twitch.tv slash ohubetcha, but it's always a good time on the Wednesday stream, so make sure you check that out. Uh, Say what's up in the chat, and uh, we'd love to converse with you. Tyler, what episodes are going up on You Betcha Radio YouTube this week? We had 10 on Monday, 11 today, 12 on Friday. And the, my favorite part of these going up on YouTube is finding the weird little bits in each episode and then posting some highlights. Um, Miles was, fell victim to premature ecraculation in some episode good bits 10. Back in the that day. was a good bit. That was really good. <laughs> we, hey. It was so good before Tyler showed I up. I know. It yeah. was just you and I just talking about sn- buying snacks at uh, at Menards and premature ejaculation. To, to, go, and, to go back to those times, man. Uh, well, Miles, we might uh, have to go on You, you Bet Your Radio uh, YouTube and as, relive that. As the Nard Dog would say, I wish that you knew you were oh, in the good God. old days before you left them. <laughs> <laughs> and we will leave you with that. Miles, I am Ryan the T-shirt guy. And I'm Miles the You Bet You guy. May your ranch always be runny. Your bush lattes forever be cold. Cheers, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah.